Hi, I'm Will, one of the product managers here at Fresho, and I'm about to introduce you to our new feature, Inventory. Within Fresho Inventory, it helps connect what you buy and what you sell to generate a stock amount that you've currently got on hand, as well as being able to automatically say what your cost prices for products will be. So let's jump in. Within Inventory mode, we've got this new tab here. So you can go to buy mode, sell mode, and now inventory mode. When you first come into inventory mode, you'll see this screen where you'll be able to see all your base units. A base unit is a product that you are going to want to create mappings against. So it's going to have different quantity types that you might buy or sell that then map to this base unit, which is the main unit that you want to stock take. So if I go in, create a base unit here, I'll be able to say, I want to stock take on the box of apples. So I'll create a base unit on that. And then I want my, my customers will still want to order the kilo of Fuji apples. So here I'm going to create a mapping towards that box. I'll be able to click on the box here and customize that how I want. So in this example, I'm saying I want 12 kilo or there is 12 kilos in the box of uh, Fuji apples and submit that. We'll need to go through and do this for all my products um, to make sure that we, we then know which products are base units and also any mappings or associated products to that, to that base unit. Once that setup's complete, we'll be able to go and do a stock take. So within the stock take, We've got a few fields here. We've got the current on hand predicted. So this current on hand predicted amount is going to say, I've got um, seven Apple's Fuji box left in my warehouse based on my previous sales and purchases um, compared to my last stock take. But I can still go ahead and put a stock take in to override that figure. You can see we also allow negatives here. So we're not going to stop any sales um, going through uh, if, if there is going to start being a negative amount and, and something, something might have gone wrong with, with the last stock take or with, uh, with the conversions. So that's, that, that's, that's absolutely fine. We can do this stock take as we're do, still doing our day's purchases and sales. Um, Fresho just takes this stock take as the final thing that's happened in the day. So at the end of the, today, we believe that your stock, or your, you've said that your stock take is going to be whatever amount you put in this field. If you don't put any amount in this field, then we just take the last or the, the current on hand as what we think you've got in stock. You, ha you have to have done at least one stock take for us to know what, uh, what your current on hand is. So in this example, we don't have any stock allocated. So once you've done all your stock taking, you can see here we've got a stock variance report, which um, compares your current on hand to your current stock take um, to be able to say, what, what, what do we have less on than we originally thought we would? And that just helps keep on top of your products, making sure that there aren't any mistakes going on. Once you've done your stock take, you'll be able to head over to buy mode and go to buying list. Buying list is a feature that we've got that allows you to buy from all your suppliers um, with the click of a button. So you'll be able to see the information we put in the stock take transfers through to the buying list. Here we can see the, that stock on hand and then we've also got a closing stock. So that's taking into consideration what your customers have ordered um, to give you an amount that you've got left. In here, we can see that there's 25, a negative 25. So that obviously means that we need to start buying some of those. Uh, you can see it also remembers who you last purchased off. So I can go, yep, I put 50% of my purchase through bros, 50% of my purchase through the wholesale. Uh, I can go in, uh, well, probably 30 here and let's go 10 here um, and you can also see what we've got is the concept of a market buyer so the market buyer gets a shopping list sent to them of, of what needs to be bought instead of you needing to allocate who you actually want to purchase it from if you don't know yet 
Uh, then you can go through, um, check out your cart. And what this is going to do is this is going to send through those purchase orders as one group of products that uh, that you've ordered to to those suppliers as an email and the shopping list to your market buyer. So if I go ahead, check that out, that's that's the, the buying done. Then when I'm, if I want to, I can go back into inventory mode and take a look at this buy report, which uh, really shows in, in more information uh, where, where that current stock on hand is, what your customers have purchased, and also what purchase orders you've just put through. So you can see all the purchase orders that are put through to create a closing stock on hand. And this can, this can be good if you want to go back and check at the end of the day, maybe some more customer orders have come in just to make sure that that closing stock on hand isn't in any sort of negative amount. Um, and yeah, you, this is uh, printable by PDF or exportable by CSV. The other reason why you might want to use this is if you don't want to do your purchasing using that buying list feature. Um, if you want to continue doing purchasing how you usually do it, that's absolutely fine. You can use this to help you do that purchasing without needing to use Fresho, uh, Fresho's buying list. Uh, we can also do this for days in advance if we want to check uh, days in advance if there's any orders coming through or, or, or for whatever reason. So once we've done all our purchases in Fresho, we then want to be able to update what we actually received so that Fresho inventory knows the true value of what you've received and also uh, the, the, the count of what's received. If you've done your purchasing in Fresho, then you go to buy mode, go across to your orders, your accepted orders, and you're able to see the orders that you've submitted here uh, from, from that buying list. So if you've ordered from a particular supplier already, you can go in, uh, adjust the quantity. So maybe you got 14 of that, cost you 25, finalize, finalize that, nice and easy. If you purchase through a market buyer, so you haven't allocated who you've actually purchased from, you can do that allocation via reconciling purchases here. So here I can go ahead, add a supplier, add that to bros, uh, add another supplier here and I'll go wholesale fruit and veg to this one and then go edit and say yep uh, that one cost me 21 that one cost me 22 and those are the right quantity types so you can see it groups together those products that that have been ordered from that same supplier uh, then save and close that so that's 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 easily done uh, the the other way you can you can do it is you can go in and create a new order and just uh, without having a purchase order already in there you can go in and create an order for one of these suppliers nice and easily where you're not going to be sending any purchase orders to that supplier you've just received their invoice and that's all you're entering in there so that's that's one way you can do it there is another way that you can do it if you don't do your purchasing or don't have all your suppliers that you purchase off set up in Fresho, we've got this stock adjustment tool. Uh, so this stock adjustment tool uh, allows you to put through, as, as we spoke about purchases, also wastage or any other um, things that you want to adjust. So that other field can be positive or negative amounts of stock uh, for whatever reason you want. But in the example of a purchase, uh, if I put through uh, some of those apples, I can just go in here, uh, say, uh, yep, it was for uh, tomorrow's date, because uh, that's what I'm uh, finalizing all the others one, where for uh, the quantity, I've just put in as three, and then I can say, yeah, I just bought this off a mate, and submit that. So that, that all flows through nice and easily. Now, when I go into a product, uh, I'm able to see a bit more information uh, about that product. So we're able to see a cost price, and then we're able to see how that cost price translates across different units. So uh, because the Fuji apples uh, by the kilo is one twelfth of a box, that cost price is one twelfth of a box. And also that closing stock on hand is uh, 12 times as much as uh, the box. Uh, and we can go through each of these. So the cost projections, you can see, uh, the purchase, 
uh, put in as twenty nine dollars. So therefore, that's what my uh, uh, that's what my cost price is for that product. And we calculate this based on average weighted cost price per day. So every day that you purchase, it will start resetting your cost price based on that day's purchases. And we take an average weight of, of purchases. So if you order more from one supplier at, uh, at a certain price, uh, then, then that is going to ha- be closer to that price than the other supplier that you've purchased less of. So the, the quantity that you purchase influences how much weight that adds to uh, the the price that the average price paid for that product. Um, We've also got the stock projections and a history of stock projections. So you can see uh, the information around why we think that you've got this much on stock uh, based on sales purchases and you're able to see all those flow on through. Uh, One really cool thing around this, uh, this cost so you can see we've got a cost of $29, $2.42 in there. If I go across to sell mode, so this is on the uh, Apple's Fuji box, and then I go to my products, I go to the Apple's Fuji, and you can see that cost price is automatically updated on, on that product. So as you put in those purchases, that will update your cost price, and that will flow through to Fresho uh, sell mode. Now, if you use margin-based pricing, which means that your um, your price, that your cost price is, uh, will automatically update your level prices based on that margin. So you can see on level one and two, I've put it so that it's margin-based pricing, meaning that it's the margin that affects the cost. If I go and make purchases in inventory mode, or I can also update it manually here, you can see those two level prices um, up actually update and the margin stays the same. You can change it between levels. So uh, different levels or negotiated prices can have a static price as well. If you if you want to keep that for some of your levels whilst, whilst allowing the others to update automatically, which will obviously guarantee your, your margin and also save you time because you don't need to go through updating those level prices. Uh, so that's the that's the main the main focus around inventory. Uh, it's able to tell you what you've got on hand. Uh, it's able to tell you uh, how much each item costs on, on average. It's it gives you a current on hand prediction and compares that to a stock take via the variance report. And then uh, whilst you're buying, it's able to tell you how many sales you've got across all the different units. So that's that's not just the sales of the boxes of apples, that's the sales of the kilos of apples as well uh, to, to make sure that you're capturing all those customers' orders and don't need to be doing any of those conversions yourself. Uh, if you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and we'll be able to answer them for you. Thanks.